In this video we're going to look at integration, or sometimes also called you know, anti-differentiation, and perhaps this slightly more awkward name gives us a good sense of what we're, we're trying to do here, which is to kind of undo the effect of differentiation. So for example I might have dy by dx, which is 3x squared, and I want to go back and find what the original function y was before we differentiated it, so I just know its gradient formula I want to go back and find that function. Um, and um, now you might just remember uh, the answer here which was that you know if I differentiate x cubed uh, we got 3x squared and you know we can just observe here that that uh, is a correct answer that this differentiates to give this but with integration it's a little bit more complicated because um, although it does work x cubed, uh, there are other functions that work as well. For example, x cubed plus 2 works, because when I differentiate this, I get 3x squared from here, and the 2 differentiates to give 0. In fact, I could put I could put any number here. I could make it 21, I could make it 217, I could make it minus 217. So actually, um, the, w the way we express this um, is to say that uh, it's y equals x cubed plus c, where c is uh, an arbitrary constant. Okay, so what that means is that at the moment that can be any value. And if we think about what's going on here, let's think about the graph, so I've just drawn rough sketches here, it's not exactly accurate, but uh, here's y equals x cubed, and I've also got y equals x cubed plus 2, and y equals x cubed minus 3. Um, now, if I'd drawn these really accurately, which I haven't, uh, then these would uh, just be shifted up the page, but otherwise be exactly the same. So it'd be exactly the same curve, but this one's two higher uh, than the black one, and this one is three lower than the black one. So at any given value of x, what we're saying is all these curves have the same gradient function. If I look at a particular, look at a particular value of x, and I look at all of the points on these curves, uh, for that value of x, the tangents will go in the same direction. They will have the same gradient functions. Uh, but they are, of course, different functions. So, simply knowing dy by dx isn't going to be enough for us to work out precisely what the function is. We would also need uh, some other uh, information. But let's say, for example, if I, uh, you know, if I also knew, uh, as well as this bit of information here, that the curve um, that I'm looking for uh, you know, passes through a given point, so let's say we know it passes through the point 2, 11, then we could work out precisely which of these curves it is, because I know um, it's of this form y equals x cubed, and it's the one that if I go to x equals 2, uh, I get, you know, to, to y equals 11, so it's the curve that's going to go through that point, there's going to be one of them in this family of curves. So this is a family of curves, all who have the same derivative, um, but now I know it passes through 211, I can say, okay, well if it's y equals x cubed plus c, and it goes through 211, well let's put in y equals 11, and x equals 2, so y 11 equals 2 cubed plus c, so that's 11 equals 8 plus c, so c equals 3. So given this information as well, we can say that the uh, curve that we're looking for is y equals x cubed plus 3. Okay, so now let's think about how we uh, can find that uh, first part of the antiderivative when it's not one that we just recognize. So let's say I've got um, dy by dx equals 7x to the 4. Now, this isn't just one that uh, I automatically remember from a list it's not going to be a really neat number. So let's think about how we go about differentiating a function that's of this sort. Uh, we know we get something like this. I'm expecting the answer to be something you know, a little bit like this, of this form. I'm not going to get something crazy like sine or um, you know something really different. Um, so when I have let's say 5x to the 7 and I differentiate it, what we do is we multiply by uh, the power okay so we get 35 uh, x to the 7 and then we reduce the power by 1 okay 
uh, you know, we replace uh, n with n minus 1. So dy by dx here would be 35 uh, x to the 6. So if we want to undo that process, we're going to need to undo those operations one at a time. So this is the first one. So if I wanted to go back from here to here, I'd have to start by uh, increasing the power by 1. OK, so I'd get back to this. And then I need to divide uh, by uh, the power, OK? And it's this power here, OK? So it's not the original power that I've started with here. It's, if you like, I'll call it the new power here, right? So when I have uh, nx to the n, sorry, when I have ax to the n, when we differentiate that, we get a n x to the n minus 1. That's what we found before. So if we go the other way, if I start with um, x to the n, what do I do? Well, I actually increase the power by 1, so that would give me x to the n plus 1, different value of n here, obviously, and now I divide by the new power, so I'd get x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. We've had an a in front of it, of course, that doesn't make any difference. I can have the a everywhere, just a constant. So here, I'm going to go back and I'm going to increase the power by 1, uh, and that gives me 7x to the 5. Now I need to divide by the new power, and that gives me then 7 fifths uh, x to the 5. This notation, by the way, we're not going to use uh, beyond these introductory examples. It's not a good notation to use this. Um, but here we go, it's given us the answer here, 7 fifths x to the 5. So um, if I were to differentiate this, I would multiply by 5 and reduce the power by 1, and that would give me 7x to the 4. So it's worked. OK, so let's do another one. I've got 5x to the 8, and I've just summarised what we did here a second ago. Dy over x is ax to the n, so we increase the power by 1, divide by the new power, and we'd get ax to the n plus 1, divided by n plus 1. So y here would be 5x to the 8, and so we add 1 to the 8, and we get x to the 9. I've got the 5 there, and then I divide by the new power, so it's 5x to the 9 over 9. And of course, remember from what we were saying at the start, I didn't do it in the last example, but we do also need to add on uh, the plus c here, so perhaps I should put that in here in my summary as well, so we get plus c. Um, what if I had dy by dx equals uh, 15x squared? Well, I'm going to increase the power by 1 to get x cubed and divide by the new power which is 3 and here uh, we've also got plus c but here I should notice that 15 divided by 3 is 5 so that just gives me 5x cubed plus c so I know that if this is the derivative the original function belongs to this family of curves if I had a bit more information I might also be able to work out what c is but there we go, that's the basic idea now because we use integration all the time we've got a special notation for it. So I can summarise what I've done here uh, for these two examples. So let's do it for the first one. And I could say, uh, I could use this sign here. And if I write this, this means exactly what we've just done. I'm going to write the 5 ninths here as a fraction outside. And this sign, sort of like a sort of a very stretched out S, means the integral. Now, um, I should also write in here though dx. Okay, so the what this says is this is here. This sign means the integral of, and dx here means with respect to x. So. As always in maths, when you read out the symbols, they should make sense. Logically, you should be able to read them as sentences, and they should make sense. So uh, this says the integral of 5x to the 8 with respect to x is equal to 5 ninths times x to the 9 plus c, where c is an arbitrary constant. And this x is in, this dx bit is really important. And uh, it tells us which of the letters in here we're integrating with respect to. Now, I almost left it off initially because there's only what there was only one letter in there, the x, and um, and so it was kind of obvious, I suppose, that we're integrating with respect to x. But we should still put the dx in. Certainly, in an exams, uh, you'll get penalised if you don't do that. Of course, it's really most important when we've got two different letters uh, inside the integral. So, for example, if I did the integral of a times x to the five 
dx, where a is a constant, and I can see a is being treated as a constant here because this is dx, so x is the variable, I would increase the power of x by 1 to get x to the 6. I've got a constant of a, and I divide by the new power, so I get a x to the 6 over 6 plus c. Whereas if I did this integral a x to the 5 dA, well, now I'd integrate the a, and this x to the 5 would be a constant. So I'd have my x to the 5 as a constant. Now a is a to the 1, so I'm going to increase the power by 1 to get a squared, and divide by the new power, which is 2 plus c. So I get totally different answers, and these are totally different things going on here. We've got x is the variable, and here a is the variable.